U2's new album, Songs of Innocence, is going out for free to a half a billion people in the next five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. one. On September 9th, 2014, U2 and Apple teamed up for the world's largest album release ever. But was the world ready for it? The album Songs of Innocence was automatically put in 500 million Apple and iTunes users' desktops and iPhones without permission. This led to a giant backlash for both Apple and U2. Let's take a look at how the crisis unfolded. Apple approached U2 in early August 2014 and offered a $100 million contract to enter into a joint promotion for the band's new album and the iPhone 6. Shortly after the promotional plan unfurled, resulting in a less than positive response regarding this act of generosity, social media sentiment dropped 41%, and three days after the release, Apple launched an application allowing users to delete the album if they chose. Users had until October 13th to re-download the album for free, but would have to purchase it after that. U2 took most of the heat, but the band did come out with an apology a month later. Uh, oops. Um... Sorry about that. Um... He apologized, but do you think he really meant it? So how did this play out with the public? This PR process is best described by the two-way asymmetrical model. Apple and U2 focused on achieving short-term attitude change with the delete application, but were primarily interested in having its public come around to their thinking, rather than changing the way U2 and Apple interacted with their publics. Though the release may have harmed U2 and Apple's relationships with their publics, Apple increased sales and U2 increased awareness of their new album and their band. Just six days after its release on iTunes, a record-breaking 33 million people had already listened to it digitally. This release resulted in an increase from 14 million U2 downloads to 81 million Songs of Innocence downloads. A 2015 study found that 23% of music listeners played at least one song by U2, more than any other artist for that month. The study also found that of those who listened to U2's music, 95% of them accessed at least one track from Songs of Innocence. A notable musician, Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters, had a few words to say on how the marketing tactic affected the band's relationship with their public. I think the misstep was the wording. If it had been, here it is, if you want it, come grab it. Let's see how Apple and U2 could have created a launch that got the word out and made their users happy at the same time. So just follow the steps and become PR rock stars.